Hey there, just a quick reminder, we have a mentorship program if you're looking for personalized coaching and mentorship to help guide you to the next level of your interior design business, whatever that might look like for you, whether it's processes and procedures or what services to offer to how to incorporate wellness, intention, or spirituality into your projects, come join us over at designcoven.com forward slash join. Or if you're just in search to connect with other like-minded interior designers, you can join our free community also located at designcoven.com forward slash joy. Hey there, we are kicking off San Diego Design Week 2022 a day early with my friend Carly Ely. We have an explosion of six episodes coming out this week, one for every day of San Diego Design Week. It officially starts tomorrow, September 21st and goes to the 25th. But we thought we would do an extra episode just because we can. And uh, this theme for San Diego Design Week is inspiration. I have decided to explore inspiration with six different creatives all through the different senses. So we have sight, sound, taste, smell, and touch. And I, of course, being Rachel, decided to include mindfulness because for me, it all starts with intention. And so Carly is going to share her story, her origin story with her work and uh, the realm of mindfulness. Carly Ely is a self-taught fine artist, muralist, and photographer based out of San Diego, California. With a natural inclination to painting portraits and figures of women in her work, she is drawn to the seductive and celestial while exploring introspective view of human existence, spirituality, and the natural world. Carly prefers acrylic ink on wood panels when painting small and a combination of paint and aerosol when working on large scale murals. Carly is passionate about the ocean and has participated in and produced mural festivals for Pangea Seed Foundation's Sea Walls in collaboration with Surf Rider Foundation and her artist organization, Cohart Collective. Carly Ely has created both large scale art installations and murals at various institutions. In February of 2018, she exhibited art at the San Diego City College, MOAH, the Lancaster Museum of Art and History in October of 2018, the Museum of Oceanside in February 2020, and the Miami Museum of Graffiti in January 2020. She has uh, participated in prestigious mural festivals like Pow Wow, Pangea Sea, New Zealand, and has painted murals in Canada for Rustic Magic Mural Festival, Mexico, and music and arts festivals throughout the United States, including Cabo Del Mar, Cabo Dallas, Soundset Festival, Minneapolis, EDC, Las Vegas, and Coachella Festival with Global Inheritance. And Carly is a dear friend of mine. I'm so excited to have her on. She's such an inspiration. And if you don't know about her, welcome to her world. It is filled with magic. You're listening to the Holistic Interior Design Business Podcast. This is a podcast that guides you as a new or inspiring independent interior designer navigating your entrepreneurial path. Here with my over 20 years experience, I will share my holistic approach to design with intention and ancient practices, including feng shui, all incorporating mind, body, and spirit into my design projects. You will also learn from seasoned interior designers as they give strategies and insight of how they built their businesses and continue to work in the field. Together, we will discover supportive trade partners, new ideas, creatives, and inspiring artists from around the world. I am your host, Rachel Lorraine Crawford. Hello, hello. We have a special episode, of course, for San Diego Design Week. We are interviewing six creatives this entire week, all on the inspiration theme that San Diego Design Week has created. And here at Bewitching the Home, we are discovering inspiration through 
the five senses plus the sense of mindfulness. I wanted to add that extra piece because I feel like it's so important. And Carly Ely is here with us today <laughs> and she is a beautiful artist and we are going to be exploring inspiration through mindfulness with her. So before we get into that, I am going to go ahead and set our space by ringing our bell. It's really connecting with the present moment, grounding into our body and our breath. And then of course, we're going to light a candle. And if you hear any noise in the background, it's airplanes going by, which is really cool. <laughs> We've got that going right under the flight path. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So connecting with fire, um, the creative element, the element of connection, creativity, and just setting intentions for a beautiful conversation and inspiration for sure day with Carly. Um, then I am going to pull us a card. So Carly, I'm pulling from Angela Mary Magic's Moon Baby Magic Tarot. So cool. let's see what we've got. And I'm going to read the card right side up. So if it comes in reverse, we're turning okay. it over. We got the hanged one. And the word that she has here is pause, which is really oh, wow. good. Very accurate. <laughs> That's totally what's happening with me right now too. So yeah, that's good. what is what does that mean I for you? I finally have have a break. I have a break from just back to back murals for the last several months, and I'm, I've been having some downtime, and it's tripping me out a little bit. <laughs> it's hard to sit still sometimes, but it's been really good. Yeah, no, I feel you on that. I I feel like I don't even when I have time, I don't pause or wait or stop or just take a moment yeah but yeah we get to have this this space where we get to pause for a moment and just be in the moment and I love it so much um what do yeah. you what are you nourishing yourself over there with do you have um anything special that you're I have coffee nice and my yeehaw mug and water and my space thermos oh <laughs> fantastic I should probably drink be drinking water but it's the evening and I've got a seven caves, three dots and dash can cocktail, which I That's usually pretty. don't do a ton of can cocktails, but Jeff at seven caves knocks it out. He knows what is up. So that's what I'm enjoying oh. over here. Mm -hmm. What's in it? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, well, it's a classic cocktail. It's his own version of three dots, but it's more citrusy citrus spice so he's got the seven caves rum with citrus juice and um yeah it's just a combination of those things and he makes nice. all of his rums and gins um he's pretty magical yeah. perfect right. for a hot day it is <laughs> it's really refreshing um so i always ask everybody what what is home for you at the moment home is here where i am currently in golden hill we're really close to the park and especially with this downtime, I've really been a homebody and doing a lot of gardening and decorating and cleaning. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Golden Hill is home. Nice. So I wanted to get into um, your origin story a little bit so that we can kind of take that journey with you as far as like, how did you get into the art space and what you do and, and just knowing like, how did all that come about? Because I'm, I'm sure it was probably pretty magical because everything that you touch is like magic. So <laughs> just curious Thanks. about all that. Yeah, I've I've been painting, drawing, uh, making things since I was a little girl, a baby, practically. And it's something like my mom noticed about me that I would just kind of be in my own world and zone out for hours at a time. And I think, yeah, that's just, I would go into a flow state yeah. as a kid and just draw and paint. And she enrolled me in some art classes when I was, when I was really young. Um, oh. And it's something I kind of always came back to. Yeah. 
And so did you go to school for art or were you just kind of making art and like getting your way into a community that supported you? Like how did, how did like these murals and all these pieces come about? Yeah. So I never thought I could, you know, make an income <laughs> with art really. And that, or at least that's what I was told growing up. So I, I took business classes and kind of went in that direction and it wasn't, until later on that I was just pursuing it as a hobby, really, or a side project, and just started doing more art shows locally, connected with local artists and muralists and people that were painting larger and larger, and that was really appealing to me. And also painting in spaces that were like installation spaces, like the whole experience was really appealing to me. Yeah, so Art was always something I did, even if I, I wasn't working a job that really fulfilled me creatively. It was something I was doing after hours. So in my, my free time, my downtime from not trying to make an income working, um, I just did art. I painted until super early in the morning sometimes. It was just something I, I had to do. Art, always something I think I'll have to do like for my mental sanity, for <laughs> just everything. It, it has to come out of me in that form, I think. Yeah, and then, so how did you get into the spray paint action? Um, were you always involved with that or is that an evolution? Did you, how did that come about? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about this the other day because I actually did a lot of stencil stuff like way back in the day, but it was not a lot of things I showed anyone, it was more for fun. And I would take that time to tediously cut out by hand each stencil and layer them. And um, so that was probably my first introduction with spray paint. And then it wasn't till a few years after that, um, probably like 2000s or something. I, yeah, I, I had friends, graffiti artists that were doing it and painting larger scale and it just made a lot more sense. It was a lot faster to get on the wall. And as soon as I started experimenting with it, I got really into it. I got kind of hooked. Like I love a good challenge. So it was definitely challenging initially, but just the reward of it, it was very gratifying to use spray paint and go fast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and the scale that you talk about, I mean, these, murals are ginormous i can't even imagine like doing something small but you're doing like these buildings what's been the biggest i guess what one what's the biggest mural because probably everybody wants to know that but i also want to know a, a few more things that are a bit deeper but you can kind of go into that for just a moment of telling us like what what is the scale sure. of these these murals well i think the one i completed with my partner christopher konecki that was in january we did a seven story building and that is in East Village and it was for key conservation. Um, I think that one technically was the biggest one I've ever worked on. Um, and that one required like an 80 foot boom lift and you have to be harnessed in and it's a different approach. It's, and it's when you're doing that scale, it's not really something you can project there. Sometimes you can use a projector, sometimes I mean, I, I try not to use a projector at all, really, but once in a while I will, if I'm just trying to speed things up, I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I typically use like an overlaying method where I make symbols and marks on the wall, overlay the image, and then kind of follow it, following your little breadcrumbs and laying it out. Oh my but, gosh. Um, yeah, probably this seven story one. <laughs> and it, I don't remember how wide it is it's just the whole yeah. side of a building <laughs> yeah it's insane and I'm sure that they selected you because um of intention and what they were all about can you tell us about how intention and and the mind and mindfulness kind of played into that particular Definitely. mural and and maybe some others yeah so <laughs> it used to surprise me um like how I would get these jobs or requests and it seemed 
so like serendipitous like I'm like oh my gosh I love these animals and then these people want me to paint these animals and that now it's like it's kind of a no duh type of thing where I'm like of course that's what's happening because that's the intention I'm putting out these are the things I love and I think that's just how the universe works so mm -hmm. when you're yeah you're focused on these things that's what's going to come to you and I had key conservation reach out to me um just over instagram like a dm yeah. um they loved like some of my animal murals and asked if i'd ever want to be involved and in helping them promote their app and i was like of course and then we met and then i just had a really good feeling just meeting with them and just kind of went from there we kind of brainstormed and i think even at that meeting i was like how cool would it be if we just did a mural for you guys like something that really put the word out about mm -hmm. their app that's in development and just kind of get people's attention. And um, I think that's all it takes is that, that what if. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, so what is inspiring your work when you get with somebody like that is, is the client bringing to you like the idea and then you're kind of spinning off of that and getting inspired by the theme of it or is there something that comes to you like you know dreaming or, or I don't know how yeah. you get your I get different ways dreaming is a big part part of it I usually get just like kind of like little movies like I'll get a picture mm -hmm. a flash of an idea in my head um super visual that way like I just see things before knowing <laughs> I guess yeah um, what's going on and I'm like oh like that looks cool and then I'll map it out just visually in my head um but it's really funny though because it's usually that first like flash or that instinct that I get yeah. that ends up being what they want or what makes the most sense oh and God. just there's all these little things like these little signs that kind of come together like Chris and I went to the beach uh, this was like a summer or two ago and I think we had watched something a documentary that uh, focused on a peregrine falcon and I was like that is so cool like we just we love nature stuff <laughs> yeah. and animals and and we were at the beach at Sunset Cliff and I saw a bird like sitting on the cliff like in this little crevice and then I was like Chris I think that's a peregrine falcon and then we were like looking closer and like took photos and zoomed in. Oh and then later on, we looked it up, of course, and it was like definitely a peregrine falcon. And we we're like, ah, oh, it's so cool. And then also like this trail we walk in Golden Hill, just around Golden Hill Park. There's this spot of these like five trees that I now know are tree pines and mm -hmm we that's just like our little ritual we go we touch the trees we like kind of meditate there i have no one knows this but i have crystals buried there and like, wow. <laughs> like a little sacred spot um but yes it's just like i don't know there are these like special connections that happen and then they turn into art <laughs> or yeah just the other way around it's really interesting how that works but yeah. the I guess the point of that is we ended up painting on that seven story building a large peregrine falcon and then Tory Pines. And I pitched the the idea to um, Megan from Key Conservation. She's the director. And she was like, you know, that's actually pretty cool when you think about it because peregrine falcons came back from the brink of dis distinction or <laughs> extinction because of yeah there were there were all kinds of reasons why but yeah. because of conservation efforts they came back they're thriving now and then the tory pine is a great example of an endangered uh, tree very yeah. like, critically endangered i believe um that could use stronger conservation efforts so it's you have best of wolf world sort of or a good example mm -hmm. where you, so that just came to be on the mural and their Thank slogan so is empowering hope and so it just made sense like conservation yeah. empowers hope oh my gosh i mean what a cool uh, way of like 
having this come to you from you know a while ago and then having it come to fruition and having it also lined up with what they're all about and their yeah. missions and their their values and yeah. and I can see that that must really be inspiring especially for that community right for and and what they've done and and I know that they've done some events with you to mm -hmm. incorporate the community can you share a little bit about what you guys have done together to incorporate yeah well that's another thing that's really cool about a cause that uh, people can get behind something that's meaningful to them and meaningful to a community because I mentioned it to our friend uh, Nico Pody, we call him Pody, it's Podomatis is his last name, but he works at Courtyard. Um, and so he's kind of like a guy I always bounce ideas off of and then he kind of makes things happen. <laughs> and he spoke to East Village Association and kind of put the word out and they did a little GoFundMe. And so we got um, sponsorship from East Village Association and like just having that community involvement, people kind of mm -hmm. donating to make this happen is just really cool. Like it's meant wow. to be when it's that way, it seems like. Um, yeah, um, it's incredible. And and then, you know, your work is also, I mean, it's in, it's not just outside on murals, but it's inside of spaces. And you guys just recently designed the, com what was it, the comedy? Um, what's the name of the yeah, company? Yeah, Mike oh, Drop. Mike, yeah, Mike yeah. Drop in Kearney Mesa or, yeah, Kearney Mesa. Yeah, so can you but, tell us a little bit about that and how like you guys designed basically the interiors of this space, right, with your work and yeah, other um, elements? Yeah, initially that was also like an Instagram DM situation. They, one of the owners had followed my my work for a while just on Instagram, and then they're from Arizona, I believe. So when they were thinking of this club and local artist you know I came to mind and so she DM'd me and then I went in and walked the space and this was right before lockdown right before things got crazy with COVID mm -hmm. and so the project was kind of just on a break for a couple of years and then wow. it finally happened this year yeah. yeah it was it was really cool because initially they just wanted some murals and then it's right when I walked in I I saw it like I saw all the all the, I saw what the walls would look like like I I it's so weird how that ha happens I don't know how to explain it and it sounds yeah like I'm a weirdo but whatever um, <laughs> <laughs> so I knew and I immediately saw Chris working with me and I saw it being more than just murals I saw his installation work I mean he has an amazing ability to think three-dimensionally um, mm -hmm. it's something that I it's kind of more of my weakness like but I know that I have I can see them and yeah I know what they look like and I can describe them and like and then we just kind of feed off each other and get really inspired that way and start drawing and putting it all out there but yeah as, as soon as I I met them I knew it, it could be like this big bigger project for both of us oh and gosh. to really kind of brand it and make it unique and yeah. yeah. So and so did they ended up happening. <laughs> <laughs> and did they come up with the, the theme or the inspiration behind it? Or was it a collaborative thing or? So, yeah, we did have a sit down meeting where they were like, you know, we're kind of into this Alice in Wonderland thing. And and then, but they want it to be more adult. And of course, we we're like, ooh, caterpillar, like hookah smoking, like tripping mushroom like you know of course we wanted to make it more psychedelic and yeah more adult themed and so yeah we just kind of that's what happens have these brainstorming meetings and then from there Chris and I would go home and just you know every time we do something oh yeah this would be cool and then we write it down and it just kind of organically happens that way or we see something and then you know take a photo and send it to each other like that kind of those ideas are always happening like every day for all sorts of projects wow yeah. it's like all these little sparks that are just flying back and forth between the two of you that's really neat yeah and then i'm also just seeing like i mean you spoke about it before but these animals that just keep coming in um in through your murals i feel like there's so many 
the of these spirit animals yeah. that are coming in that you're tapping into and um totally. can, you, can you share a little bit about the connection there part of that is is real life like it's having real life experiences with animals and um like an owl swooping at me at 4 a.m and then like that's happened like a few times in my life and every time it wow. triggers like a major change i've always had that sort of just natural connection with animals like kind of feeling very in tune with them and being able to communicate with them maybe on a different level like i kind of always seem to know <laughs> what the dogs need or want before anyone yeah. else does i'm just like i just know but that's another story but Yes. Um, and then another another way is with dreams. Like I just have these really vivid dreams about, you know, obviously I haven't run into a jaguar in real life yet <laughs> in this world, but I have dreams about them and um, just very, very vivid dreams. And it's, you know, I don't, I don't know if everyone has dreams like this or not, but it's just, it's weird. Like there'll be places that I like feel like I've been to before mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. it's just and they're like the details that I know are just way too specific like wow. kind of bizarre and sometimes I go back to the same places but anyway animals <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um like a jaguar kept coming into my dreams and then that ended up I ended up um proposing to paint one for this apartment community in Santa Ana. And so now there's a jaguar on their pool deck roof area. And it's just yeah. like kind of how it goes. Um, sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. No, I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's all part of it. And in your color palettes, like I feel like I can always spot you. Like um, you have a very distinct look, but is there anything behind? Like the colors that you're picking, uh, what's the inspiration behind all of that? Yeah, definitely. I just think colors are so emotional that it can convey so much. And they're also just like energetic, like they all have frequency. Same with animals, but then when you colorize them or, you know, come up with a funky palette, it just has so much more meaning emotionally for me. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really cool when people tell me that they feel a certain way after seeing a mural because of the colors, because then I'm like, oh, cool. They get it. Like it's actually <sighs> reaching them in that way. But um, I think it's what, just like, it's just a, a feeling. Yeah. What's been a mural that really maybe surprised you or came out in a way, um, or maybe pulled something from you or set off an emotion or was there anything that you've done that was just like whoa was not even like going there and it totally shifted or, or created something on its own yeah I, I feel like a, a lot of them do that <laughs> like there will be I also just have these really sort of spiritual moments when I'm painting a lot of times like I'll just oh it's a specific time when I'll be in a flow state like I'm up on a lift the sun setting and it's just like it's just this, I feel overwhelmed and I'll sometimes mm -hmm. I'll cry, <laughs> but it's just like, it's like this crazy release and just all this energy and it's, yeah, it's, um, it's interesting, but there are certain murals that are more kind of meaningful to me and, mm -hmm. and they're not always because of the subject matter either. Like sometimes mm -hmm. there's there are a lot of like obstacles even in painting that mural for whatever reason maybe like the list breaks down a bunch of times like maybe there are all these obstacles in the way there's yeah. personal stuff going on that i have to deal with they're like on the way to the the mural like i don't know that i have car trouble or or whatever happens i just like it's it's so much of the mural just comes out of me and it's just like i don't know how to explain that it's just it's yeah. very worth it it's in the end but and do you see a connection between like the intention that was put into that mural when you were creating it with like what people were saying afterward 
Oh yeah, that's so that's a trippy one. So yeah, right when you going back to your last question, so this the mural I painted for San Diego Urban Timber, that one had a lot of like serendipity to it. There were just all these like connections with these women I've never met before and just the collaborate collaborative side of it like everyone kind of having an idea and it just like it just was like the synergy of synergy of energy and <laughs> that uh it just like manifested in such a beautiful way that because a lot of times I don't know how to clearly speak <laughs> speak what I'm feeling or like in a way that everyone can understand but yeah I feel like it comes out when I'm painting like I feel like hopefully at the end the end result the visual result is all those things that you were thinking and we were talking about because yeah w with that mural in particular yeah there were there were a lot of things that people were like oh I didn't even I didn't even tell you that but that's how I was feeling and like the plant symbol, like every, it symbolizes something a little bit different and special and unique to each person. It's very like mm -hmm. personal, probably like artwork can be personal and, and yeah. how you interpret it. Um, but that, that's always really cool to hear that I painted you <laughs> on the side <laughs> of it as well. And like, for you, like, because I know you so well and you're already such an inspiration to me. Uh. I just felt like, like, oh, I got this. Like, I just knew how I wanted to represent you. And it was, it was like a very fierce, like, kind of darker, mystical energy. And you're holding the feather and there's like wind blowing and there are wolves, like and thunder and lightning. And it just like <laughs> was all this crazy, magical, like fierce energy that was kind of behind your side of the building. The other side was, you know, it's like the yin and the yang. There was a balance to the energy, but um, yeah, in the center, there's kind of a rainbow rainbow of colors, which I didn't really plan out. It just kind of developed that way as I was painting it. And um, yeah, so it kind of transitions onto the other side with the opposite dynamic. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I remember you talking about it and I didn't even realize that you knew Jessica at um, Sandy Urban Timber and you're, can you tell me about like how you guys got connected and how that came to be? Cause that was also, I feel like yeah, very serendipitous. Totally, um, that was really interesting. So I guess she was thinking about doing a mural. They were talking about doing a mural and they were asking around and I guess everyone they talked to was like, oh, Carly Ely, like, for some reason, like they felt like that was <laughs> her vibe, which makes sense now. Um, and then I remember, uh, I don't know if she texted me or someone, I think maybe Michael Soriano gave me her number to call her. And then I think she actually called me back the first time we spoke and, or, or no, I did call her. And I was like, hi, this is Carly, the artist. And right away she goes, oh my God, isn't that amazing? <laughs> She's like, isn't that so cool to say I'm the artist? <laughs> and, like, and I was like, who is this chick? I love her. <laughs> She's so rad. Like right away, I was like, oh, okay, she has like amazing energy. Like I just want to hang out with her. So oh my God. that was that was cool. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, from she's... there, obviously meeting her and talking about weird stuff and magical things. And yeah, it just kind of blossomed from there. Yeah, and I feel like she she had inspiration on her own about what she wanted, and and maybe the two of you guys just play. I mean, it seems like you play off of people so easily, and that you're able to pick yeah. up on their energy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was definitely like an energetic thing. I never like, and it wasn't like, hey, here's a bunch of money, like paint a mural. It was yeah. like. Like, I don't really know what we're doing. I've never done mural before. And I was like, I'll do it. Like, just <laughs> based on her energy alone, I was like, I just want to work with you because you're cool and I like your energy. So yeah, it, it's yeah. good to follow your intuition for things like that because usually there's a reason, so. Absolutely, and I mean, they're doing- That's probably my favorite mural I've ever done. Well, it's probably the most meaningful and mm. yeah. That's so cool. cool. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's it's crazy seeing yourself on a building. <laughs> Um, that's awesome think, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what are you what are you currently working on like what's happening at the moment what are you super excited about yeah so I'm really excited to be working on some ideas right now for skate world we're oh. painting a roller rink Chris and I are um and that's something that was also pre-pandemic the discussions for it and then Actually, it worked out because kind of over the last two, three years, I feel like roller skating has really taken off and there's yeah. like this, all this renewed interest in it and just it's a whole trend now. There's like Usher uh, roller skating. Like oh my I, God. I see on Instagram, my friend Sarah just films him now. Um, but there's just all this. It's roller skating is cool now, basically. So everyone wants to do it and I feel super excited to be partaking in something <laughs> that's cool and making it visually as cool as it is, I guess, athletically, because it deserves it. It's an old old roller rink. With some love. Well, you're very cool. So <laughs> I think anything that you touch is very cool. And I used to live on my roller skates when I was little. I just I would never oh, take them awesome. off. I just like lived in them. I broke my arm twice <laughs> from oh them God. and but yeah I love other yeah. games I'm just not good anymore but um yeah so so fun so are you able to share the inspiration behind that or is that kind of a secret at, at this moment we it's not like super developed I've again I've only seen like flashes of things that it, it looked like and of course that's what they wanted so we're we're going with that and um yeah, it's still it's still pretty early, but it'll be kind of a mix of some retro like signage, which Chris Thanks. is amazing at painting. He's just really good at lettering and typography. And I mean, I probably could do it, but it's not like what I love yeah. to paint. Yeah. So I love painting animals and people and just more organic shapes and love playing with lighting. So probably probably be a blend of, you know, cool retro signage with neon lights and they're illuminating weird things so <laughs> rad <laughs> it's probably space related yeah absolutely <laughs> it'll be fun oh, oh my yeah. goodness i love it so much you spoke a little bit about you know your ritual of hiking and going to the trees and connecting mm -hmm. with them is there anything else that you're doing right now that's keeping you grounded or keeping you centered and that you're enjoying at the moment yeah, I mean, meditating is always something I, I do and I have to do because otherwise I'll go crazy, I think. <laughs> um, then spending time with the dogs, that's that's all part of the hiking. And yeah, I think they really keep me grounded. I don't I don't know what I did before them. Yeah, I, I make stuff all the time, random things that that aren't paintings they garden like crazy I like oh i made these like little shade umbrellas and i figured out how to macrame so they're all like they have cool, oh my like, gosh macrame fringe and like just like just always doing stuff like i can't i can't really sit still like even if we're chris puts on a movie i'm like okay cool i'm gonna get out the macrame and like make something and so <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's cool fun. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. love it. So how can um, our and listeners... And then photography. Oh, photography, so, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about photography. That's such a big part of my life. I guess because I do it all the time, I don't really think about it as like a special project, but that's a big thing. And I, I just got a new camera and it's been super fun to play with. And I love being able to use like photographic references for the artwork. So there's a little bit of um, collaboration with the two mediums that way which is cool what are you really into at the moment as far as um taking photos like is there any subject i mean or... my dog not really <laughs> <laughs> always but no one sees those probably um i'm just super uh, it sounds kind of cheesy but just light like i love playing with light and like i'm a sucker for a good lens flare and mm. the bouquet like having that depth of field to where 
it just feels magical and dreamy and just playing with the light, playing with the shadow and kind of making things look as magical as they feel. Like I love yeah. doing that. And then also even taking them into Procreate on the iPad and drawing on them sometimes and having that evolve into something else. So it's really fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just all all the, the photos that you do, um, the stuff that you've made for me, like just the way, just like your touch, you just have this ethereal dreamy space and yeah so i can't wait to to play with you some more and some photos Thank and you. yeah and all of that you're so yeah. fun to create with because you're always just down to do weird stuff like <laughs> light more candles and burn some sage and like whatever whatever it is that would look cool you're like cool let's do it <laughs> Yeah, I'm always down for that and playing with crystals and all the other things. I yeah, yeah. I totally need to get back together and, and have some fun and play. Yeah. Um so how can how can everyone find you? Where can we see your work? How can we connect with you? Yeah, you know, I've really it's on my list of to do's is to make a map of all the mural locations. But you can still figure that out on Instagram. I try to geotag everything. Um my Instagram is just my name. Carly Ely, no space. And my website is carlyeely.com, which is a little more portfolio based. So it's just the artwork, um, less puppies. And yeah, I have to update that, of course. It's also my to do. <laughs> I just looked the other day and I realized I have 15 new projects to add from this year oh that my I God. still haven't added because that's how crazy busy it's been, which is a great thing. But whoa, I didn't realize how much I had done this year already. Wow. So it's good. And I, wh how many murals or projects do you do in a year? Uh, this is definitely the most I've ever done. Um, up until a week ago, it's it's been nonstop. So I I did over 15 already. Wow. Maybe probably more like 20 because there's some stuff that I just don't show. But yeah, yeah it's it's been a good year. <laughs> That's incredible. It's been busy. Oh <laughs> yeah. I love it. Oh, well, thank you, Carly, so much for coming on and, and sharing, um, you know, your inspiration behind your work and where these things come from and, you know, your, uh, the intention and the mindfulness that goes uh, into each one of these pieces. I think it's incredible. And I know that people are able to translate the the message that you're painting into them. I think you're spot on when you talk about like using it as a medium for communication, um, mm -hmm. because you totally are, you know, enveloped with emotion and things you can't speak. You know, you, you feel these things when we look at your work and it's just like, holy, you know, it's like crap. Like, I don't even know how to express it. And you're, you're so right on and you have just this gift to be able to communicate that. So thank you for, thank you. yeah, bringing color into <laughs> our world and everywhere else. And we look forward to all the things that you're creating and yeah, you're so welcome. Thank you for, for being here. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to the Holistic Interior Design Business Podcast. If it's one that you have been enjoying, please share with anyone else that you think can benefit from this knowledge and leave us a five-star review that helps us get seen and found by other new and aspiring interior designers. And if you're looking for mentorship, I invite you to join our club here at the Design Coven. It's a bridge between school and real life interior design. We get in much deeper there. We have virtual and in-person events. So everyone is welcome. You don't need to have a design degree to be part of it. Just an interest in holistic interior design. I also want to thank our editor, Marcy Ferry. And lastly, Kinseth Thibodeau, who is our music composer. Until next time, be well, and we will see each other soon.